The Entrepreneurial You is brought to you by JPS, powering what matters. It's time to unleash the entrepreneurial spirit in you. Time to take that step towards leading and excelling in life and business. Whether you're starting with an idea or you're looking to scale up, there's something here for everyone. So follow me on this journey of unleashing and celebrating the entrepreneur in you. This week on The Entrepreneurial You, the fierce and fabulous Dr. Marcia Forbes is our featured business leader. And in our Vox Pop, the opportunity of a lifetime. What would you ask your favorite entrepreneur if you got to meet them? Plus, space tourism. We share the who, what, and costs associated with that trending topic. And in our startup stories, Jess's gifts and decor. Those and more on this episode of The Entrepreneurial You. Her influence spans across many phases of media development in Jamaica, from being credited with helping to transform the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation, JBC, to her pioneering work in video live streaming solutions. This Fulbright scholar and media specialist has comfortably claimed competence and authority as a lecturer of media management and author of media research-based books, from working as a registered general nurse to becoming co-founder and and executive chairman of Phase 3 Productions, she is Dr. Marcia Forbes on The Entrepreneurial You. Dr. Marcy Forbes, CD, JP, one of Jamaica's most influential business leaders in the field of media, has been the driving force for success and development behind some of our most recognized media brands. With a history of groundbreaking achievements at the helm of multimedia entities, Dr. Forbes stands as a visionary who's played critical roles in redefining the local media landscape. To add to that list of accomplishments, Dr. Forbes is also an author, a lecturer, a mother, a grandmother, and an inspiring figure for generations of females to come. We are pleased to be joined by the outstanding Dr. Marcia Forbes. Welcome, Dr. Forbes. It's such a pleasure to have you on The Entrepreneur at You. Thank you, Henneke. It's my absolute pleasure. Absolutely. And so it's been a while. It's a long time I don't see. What have you been up to? Well, what have you been up to? You <laughs> reimagined, re-engineered yourself. And I've been up to a lot, mm -hmm. a great deal. I have continued to lecture, but this year I'm doing a new lecture series, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing media management, which I did for over a decade, the university created a new program. And I've now been asked to lecture in marketing the media entity. Now, I did my master's degree in global marketing, advertising, and communication over 20 years ago. Wow. And so to prepare for this new lecture series, mm -hmm. nearly 40 hours of lecture at the university, mm -hmm. master's level students, I've been just refreshing, reading, delving deep into social media, and really enjoying myself. There are so many things that I've just mentioned that you've been doing and even yourself talked about that you're doing. How many hours per day does Dr. Marcia Forbes work? It depends mm -hmm. and it varies. So right now I'm doing probably over 14 hours a day because the reading is a part of mm -hmm. the work I need to do. And when I leave the office, I'm in office about eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. On weekends, sometimes five hours, even during no movement days, because one has to prepare for the lecture. Absolutely. And the prime minister understands that, you know, business has to continue. And so right now that, but there are times when I, like at my days at Television Jamaica, I was doing 18 hour days. I have a full time job as the executive chairperson at phase three, and that comes with a certain body of work. Mm -hmm. Then I lecture at the University of the West Indies, and I've been lecturing there since 1996. 
Yeah. Which is a long time, long time but not all. straight yeah, unbroken. on broken. Yeah, right? And I am lecturing there now one semester, approximately one semester a year. And I also work in terms of the voluntary sector because there was no work I've ever done in my life that was harder than being the chairperson of the United Way of Jamaica. You touched on something which I want to get back um, to, which is in different leadership style and so on. I'm going to get back to that, but we're going to have to take a break. Please stay with us. Dr. Forbes shares some business gems you will definitely want to take notes on. The Entrepreneurial You returns after this quick break. More on The Entrepreneurial You. Welcome back to The Entrepreneurial You. Our location for this episode is Winchester Business Center, Hope Road at the Phase 3 Productions Business Unit. Today, we speak with Dr. Marcia Forbes, co-founder of the company and a woman committed to transforming the Jamaican media landscape. What has it been like for you as a leader, just generally? As a leader, different era leadership has meant different things. So the time of setting up Phase 3 Productions 37 years ago, that meant something different from how it is now, even being at the helm of Phase 3 Productions. And leading at TVG was different from what it is now. Um, and leading a voluntary organization was totally, totally different. So leadership for me has evolved and even my leadership style has evolved. Back in the day at TVG, I was known as the Iron Lady, Lady. of Media. <laughs> and then Desmond Allen, who wrote that article, I remember he said, but you know, she's really a sweetheart. She, there's nothing Iron about her. But my leadership style, I was very hard and needed to be very hard in those early days because a young, I dare say attractive woman at the helm of a TV station, you know, you always have the men who will try to get what they want out of you. And so you had to, and I was re-engaging with a relatively young man. He's many years younger than me. And he said, you know, I know you from TBJ. And I said, really, Robert, you know me from TBJ? He said, yes, I came to you at TBJ and you were hard. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bother to prolong it. Mm -hmm. But um, my leadership style has evolved at phase three. I, they get away with a lot of things that in general, as head of a company, they wouldn't have been able to get away with. But the workforce has also evolved. The style and the beliefs of this, these generations that are in the workplace now, mm -hmm. Generation X and the younger ones, they don't have the same kinds of work ethic that baby boomers and the depression generation have. They want to find a way to bring about this greater balance between their work lives and their life outside of work. And increasingly they find a way to meld these two types of aspects of life. And I embrace the young people, they are great. All when they're frazzling my nerves, I have to tell you they are great. When they're good at something, nobody better than them. But you see, when they mean to give trouble, and I have a mix here at phase three. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting it out there. <laughs> yes. All right. So you said something which is critical, um, Dr. Forbes, as a leader, the buck stops with me. How critical is that for leaders in, you know, with some sphere of influence to recognize that and not just to say it though, but to live that way. I'm going to reference the Prime Minister of Jamaica mm -hmm. that whatever goes wrong with this vaccination process, the Prime Minister has to hug it up and own it because the book stops with the Prime among all his colleagues. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to get off into any political discussion, but as a leader, you have to take the good times when things go well, the ownership of those things, as well as when things don't go well, mm -hmm. you know, and that's something I've learned. I used to say IMF is Marcel's fault. So mm -hmm. whatever goes wrong, wherever I am, I take it as it's my problem to solve. Increasingly, 
at phase three, my son, Delano, who is the one who we have spent a lot to be trained in this field. From he was about five years old, he started in the business. And he really has embraced that concept as well, that he needs to own the problem. So when there are problems on location, we get very upset if the crew don't tell us because at the end of the day, the client don't care about the crew. They say it is phase three production. So you need to escalate it up so that if there's a solution, and many times there are solutions. More on the Entrepreneurial You. Welcome back to the Entrepreneurial You. Co-founder, co-owner, and executive chairperson of Phase 3 Production Limited, Dr. Marcia Forbes is my guest today, and we're zooming in on what it takes to be a successful business leader. Let's continue. Yes, Dr. Forbes, before the break, you were talking about your leadership style and so on. Do you find that you've had to adjust any because of your gender? Yes, because I remember this stands out in my mind. When I went to TVG, Captain Horace Burrell was at the peak of his peak because the reggae boys were going to France. I went to TVG in Yeah, we got holiday at that time. No? Right. Yes. And <laughs> Captain sent a message through Delia Harris that he was not going to be bullied by any woman. And I sent back a message through said Delia Harris, who was a struggling at the time. I said, Delia, tell Horace Burrell, I am not going to be bullied by any man. And Horace Burrell and I became fast friends. I put a proposition to him because when I went to TVG, the exclusive for the World Cup was signed with CVM already, you know. And you can imagine me as a new general manager coming to take this pop down JBC you? TV mm. to higher heights and not have the World Cup. Well, I said, Captain, look here, man, you make more money if you make the thing non-exclusive. You get more viewers. And I did the math for him and showed him where the JFF would be substantially better off by having the two Steve. And you know, Captain, Captain mm -hmm. is a business, was a businessman. And he made the decision and we broke the exclusive and the rest is history. But I've learned that yep, at the end of the day, it's not how many mistakes you make, you know, but how you come out. Mm -hmm. And I've learned in life that if you put in the work and you pay attention to the lessons that you learned, there are no failures. What people decide is a failure, there are lessons and you take the lessons and you move ahead. Talk to us, Dr. Forbes, about building phase three production with your family. Looking back, what has been some of the biggest wins for you? For phase three, my biggest win to date is to see that 37 years later, since my husband Richard Paddy falls, because everybody called him Paddy, because mm -hmm. he called everybody Paddy. He, if you don't know your name, as a man, you're going to be Paddy. Hey, as well, a well, woman, well. you're going to be girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So um, to see that 37 years later, a member of staff paid a huge compliment some years ago when he said, you know, Mrs. Falls, phase three operates like a startup. At first, I didn't understand what he meant when he said we operate like a startup and he meant that we're hungry we don't rest on our laurels we're always looking to see how we're going to improve how we're going to serve our customers better and that is my greatest win to date we reorganized the business to be more it compliant because the days of analog have gone we were probably the first company in this line of business, television, to go digital. We went digital many moons ago, and the final leg of going digital was our outside broadcast unit. I was a permanent secretary in the government of Jamaica when the global recession hit, because my family keeps lending me out to do things, and I thought, <laughs> Yes, it's true. They lent me out for some years to set up TVG. Then they lent me out um, when Bruce Goulding came in as prime minister and they really needed a permanent secretary. I was interviewed by a whole set of people and it was made very, very rigorous. 
but I passed the test and I went to become a permanent secretary. And my husband called me to say, with the global recession, we had paid down on our digital outside broadcast unit. We paid the manufacturers and it was being made to our specification. He wanted to know what to do. Do we pay the money that was due or do we declare the, that money dead because we don't know if the company is going to survive? Well, the company survived, Fred Gerling, and the truck was commissioned and my husband and son and somebody else went up to look at the truck. And I remember a leading player in this television industry told my son that we're stupid for going digital because that was a waste of money. Well, our digital truck has paid back for itself many times over. Indeed, the strength of a woman is like none other. Dr. Forbes is truly exemplary of that. Don't go anywhere, folks. We wrap things up for this session of The Entrepreneurial You on the other side of the break. More on The Entrepreneurial You. Welcome back to The Entrepreneurial You. Welcome back. We've been having a phenomenal conversation with a phenomenal woman, Dr. Marcia Forbes. I did not know all these things about you. Like I'm learning some of these things for the very first time and I'm impressed and inspired. <laughs> I have lived a long and a very full life. So I see. So I see. And my life has not peaked yet. Absolutely. As I told Absolutely. my WhatsApp group of school friends, mm -hmm. I said, nope, best is to come. The best is yet to come. Your latter days will even be greater than your former. What makes an effective leader, Dr. Forbes? Ah, in today's world, I think one of the most critical things is for the leader to be a decision maker. That you have to be able to make decisions without having all the facts. In former years, you do your research, you know, and you mull over everything now. Because of how fluid things are, especially if you're a media leader, you're never going to know everything about whatever it is you need to make the decision on. So being able to make a decision without all the facts is one key feature. Recognizing the value of your team, mm -hmm. that no leader is an island. No matter how brilliant you are, you are not gonna know everything and pulling on the resources of members of your team, like your team here doing this videotaping, um, they know things that you would not think of. I also know that success leaves clues. So who are some of those leaders that you would have you know, observed over the years, globally, whether locally, globally, wherever, that have inspired you to become a better leader? To be honest, these are people that I've met through their writings, through their videos or through experiences relating to them. So Peter Drucker mm -hmm. is somebody I have a lot of time for. Mm -hmm. Never met the man, he passed in 2005 thereabouts, but as a management and leadership guru, and when you read his writings, Peter. I'm in that club as well, yes. Good. <laughs> then there's a man like Nelson Mandela, mm -hmm. who I can't tell you that I rubbed shoulders with him, I'd be lying but I did meet him in Jamaica. And then Michelle Obama, mm -hmm. because how can you not love and respect uh, Michelle? When they go low, you, you go, go high. high. Come on now. And I tell you, and her shoulders, my oh friends Lord. talk about Michelle's shoulders and her thing. I don't have any of that. But her book was so human and humane that you see the strength of a woman. What is Dr. Marcia Forbes doing? Oh my gosh, remember I told you that I think the best is yet to come. I remember. And I was recently commissioned as a JP, something, Justice of the Peace, for the parish of St. Andrew, something I had put off for over probably about 10 years because I just wasn't ready. But I want to do good work through being a Justice of the Peace. I want to take on in particular the case of men who have a hard time with their children, with mm. access to their children, because that is something mm. very near and dear to me, because a lot of fathers get a hard True. time. True. So yes, I want to focus on that. And I, I even said it to Custos, because you know, you can get into the child services section, mm -hmm. different sections. That is an area that I want to 
do some work in. So 100 years from now, when we say phase three productions, or let me not limit it to phase three productions. When we say Dr. Marcy Forbes, what do you want, what adjective do you want to be used to describe you? Feisty. Mm. A woman who believed in what she believed in and stood for what she believed in. I want in particular my students, the students at UE and my mentees because that mentoring is a, an important part of what I do mm -hmm. and anybody whose life I would have touched to remember that I made a positive impact on their lives. Thank you for making the, the decision, the intentional choice to be a positive um, you know, force in Jamaica. Your work and worth is not unnoticed. We recognize you, we salute you, and we thank you for spending time with us today on The Entrepreneurial You. My pleasure, thank you. Coming up, we hit the streets to get the views of Jamaicans on our topic of the day, and we highlight another business trend you'd want to pay close attention to. Welcome back to The Entrepreneurial You. The Entrepreneurial You, voice of the people. After I wouldn't start business, and then they would have given me the idea for me to start my own. Why them can't pass on them knowledge of other people? And why them not tell them the meaning of poor? Uh, there's an acronym for poor. P-O-O-R. Passing over opportunity repeatedly. Yeah, so the money money making thing because like, sometimes you know ideas of big people no. Ideas of everybody we can, you know, especially when you move go like that. I oh, know the remedy um, 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 go about being successful, get rich. Leech, you know, that question that. That one. That one. You know, what, what type of what type of what type of investment would I would I, would I do? It? Investment money. As a businessman myself, even though I'm an entertainer, I'm, I'm telling you honest, you never really look up to no, no business person. You know what I mean, I, 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 I just have my plan and me I try make it happen. It happens slowly, but me not look up to nobody if say me have a master plan and me to emulate that person. You understand? But um me not entertainment and Romish in entertainment and the way Romish I do away me I do long time. You understand? But Romish kick off before me. I just that. So if you hear me kick off later, you hear say I follow me, follow Romish. But my thing did a long time, but you don't know I just a time. Time do everything, you understand? So Romish, my fool, big up on yourself. What gives you the drive or, or the motivation to keep going? You understand and and what what are some instances that demotivate you to make to give you an idea like you want to stop? Uh, first question would be uh, to give um I would ask him to give me some ideas on how to start a business, yes, and um also to how to run it successfully. Okay, Mr. Mafood, I would want to know what inspired you to become one of the biggest distributors in Jamaica and how do you maintain it and if there's any time that you have ever thought of any regrets within that, um, within becoming one of the biggest distributors. Two questions that I would probably ask is what motivated you to go out and get what you wanted. We know that we're in a Jamaican society where most of us live in poverty or whatever, or below the, the minimum wage and stuff. So one question is what motivated that person? And another question is what keeps them going? Yeah, what really keeps them going mean that, um, you know, a lot of businesses are starting now and then we are currently in a pan pandemic and a lot of persons are just not motivated to go and get what they they want. Question one would be, how do you cope? How do you push through when it seems as if your business is failing and you may be losing all your investment? That's one. And my second question would be, how do you feel having achieving your dreams that many years ago would have seemed impossible? I 
Richard Branson, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, what do they all have in common? You guessed it, they're all in the race to space. A new era of space tourism has ensued. We've moved from the simple study of the outer world to Neil Armstrong's walk on the moon. And now, folks are lining up to book a spot on a shuttle of the planet. The high price of all of this, just for a few minutes of floating. But what has renewed this space craze tourism venture and why are the richest people in the world competing to set up shop outside of Earth? Let's zoom in. Space shuttle flies have been a thing from the early 1980s but somehow has made a strong comeback as the talk of the town with the likes of brands such as Virgin, SpaceX, Blue Origin and Boeing CST-100 Starliner launching rockets recently. We suspect the revival has a lot to do with newly found bragging rights that can be had and revenue potential, especially now that tech advancement have made it easier and more affordable to launch off. The affordable part can be argued, of course. Analysts estimate that by 2040, the global space industry will grow from about 400 billion to more than a trillion dollars. If it's true that a seat on the shuttle will go for anywhere between 200 to 350,000 USD, then those estimates don't seem so hard to believe. In fact, a floating space hotel is set to launch in 2021 with a projected costing of $2.3 billion. Hotel mogul Robert Bigelow has planned to sell slots to government officials looking to do research as well as holiday slots to those who can afford it. By it, we mean booking costs in the low seven, eight figures. The future of traveling is space tourism. Where do you see yourself in the future? Still to come are startup stories and inspiring business tips. Welcome back to the Entrepreneurial You. Today, Jess's gifts and decor is under the startup spotlight. Hi, my name is Kiddis Collins and I am the CEO of Jesse's Gifts and Decor. What inspired me to start my business was I was home on bed rest from a difficult pregnancy and I was having severe back pain. I sought to get a maternity pillow that would ease that back pain and I couldn't find one that was suitable enough for me and I decided that I was going to make one. Now I hadn't sewn in years from high school. And I said, you know what, I'm going to borrow a sewing machine from a friend of mine who had one just laying around. And I bought some materials on the day. I asked my husband to take me to get the materials and I made some throw pillows and I posted them to my social media pages. Didn't say I was selling anything, didn't advertise it for sale. I just said, you know, look what I did today. And the people loved them. They started placing orders and everything. And the rest, as they say, is history. Um, we are now doing a whole host of personalized gifts and branded items. We do laser engraving, we do embroidery, we do vinyl printing on t-shirts, cups, you name it. We can brand it and engrave it or personalize it to your needs. The more persons ask for stuff, the more they became a part of our product offering. The most rewarding feeling in business right now is to see the reaction from persons when they get our gift items given to them as gifts. That's really a good feeling when we do get the feedback. It's, you know, there's something fulfilling about creating something that will bring joy and happiness to somebody else. Challenging at times because myself and my husband are full-time employed and running a business while being employed is not easy. It's a balancing act all the time. We do only have one full-time employee and we recently got an intern. So it's all about trying to make things work. We also do have a three-year-old who is a handful in himself, is a, is a whole business in itself. But we do hope that in the near future, we can hire more help and we will continue to expand and grow. We recently moved into our own store space, storefront space at 14 Lady Musgrave Road. And we are preparing ourselves for what this, what is, what's ahead with the very busy Christmas season. We're anticipating that it will be good for business and we're just operating in faith and hoping and praying that God would bless us, you know, and continue to be faithful to us as we have been faithful to him. I know that 
as this business happened, it was like Tiana, like, by the way, but he has blessed us and shown us that we're on the right path so many times. And for that, we are extremely, extremely grateful. So, look at world, just as a gift and decor is coming to take over. We're going to, look, going to be looking into doing interior decor and event planning and decor as well. So, stay tuned. You may contact us at 876-381-5823 on Instagram, Jesse's underscore gifts underscore decor on Facebook, Jesse's gifts and decor. And we also have a website where you may place orders, www.jessiesgiftsanddecor.com. More on the entrepreneurial you. Welcome back to the entrepreneurial you. Even without clarity, someone type that in chat. Even without clarity, I'm ready for it. See, we wait and we got to get the whole plan. I got to know the whole. No, no, no. You're, what I realized is I didn't even have the capacity and the container to see this version of Lisa. I didn't have the capacity to see this. You couldn't have told me 20 years ago, seven bestsellers, global enterprise, multi-million dollar business. You couldn't have told me. You couldn't have told me that because I would have somehow talked myself out of it because I didn't believe it yet. And so to understand what's your next level and to say, I'm ready for my next level. I'm ready for the unknown. I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to be brilliant over here and still learning over here. I'm ready to touch the people I've never touched before. I'm ready for my next level. Say that, write that in chat now. I'm ready for my next level. I'm ready for my next level. You have to keep saying it. Otherwise, especially if you are a high achiever, like most people here, you're a high achiever. You have to watch out if you're a high achiever because high achievers are always being exalted and always being lifted up. And you can get comfortable in being a high achiever until you haven't achieved anything high anytime recently because everyone else is wowed by you. So I was always honoring the what I've done. But I'm always saying, what's my next level? Every November, every November, I spend the whole month talking to God about one thing, one topic. What's my next level? When you say you're ready, you're calling in everything you need. And now type in chat, give me what I need for my next level. Type in chat that because then you open up the doors for the right person, the right opportunity. Guess what? Hold on. The right breakdown. Because here's what you got to realize. If you're going to have a breakthrough, something has to break down. So something has to leave your space so something else can enter your space. Whether it's old habits, behaviors, people, toxic energy, whatever it is, you don't have enough space for all that's coming into your next level. You got to create space for that. Hook your caboose, ladies and gentlemen, hook your caboose to someone else's train and be crazy coachable. When I hooked my caboose to someone else's train who knew what I didn't know, you would, I, I blew my mind with what I began to learn because she taught me what was in my blind spot. I didn't even know what I didn't know I didn't know, right? I knew about being dazzling. I knew about being, you know, uh, electric on stage. I didn't know about profit and loss sheets. I didn't know about profit margins. I didn't know about year over year of financial growth. I didn't know about uh, the things I learned about in business is what took my business from five figures to eight figures to nine figures. It was what I, right, be crazy coachable. Exactly. That's what I began to do. And I hooked my caboose and I didn't do it for one year. I killed my ego, ladies. I killed my she-go. And I, I followed this chick and I learned for eight years. And in the sixth year, I was able to hire her as my second in command in my company. And she wasn't cheap. And so... The, the first part to that, to what you said, is to recognize that it's your learning time. You want to do what you haven't done. You need to know what you don't know. And you can't know what you don't know if you're the only person feeding you. Go get someone who knows what you don't know. And now with online learning, you don't even have to leave your house. Hello, it can't get any easier than that. You just got to click invest in yourself. When, whenever someone steps on my campus, I say, you're not investing in me. You're investing in yourself. You're just using me as the vehicle, but you got to trust you. Most people will trust me, the coach, more than you'll trust you to implement. 
trust yourself to implement, and then find the right coach for you. If you're listening to this show and you checked in to me and you're still here, that means you are a game changer. You are a gladiator. So being that, you are the go-to person. You have to be willing to give you what you need first. I had to be willing to what looked like selfish. What looked like I was all about me. I had to be willing to build something for me so I had something to give. I was giving constantly from a half full cup, constantly. I had to go away and fill my cup up so that I can serve my family from my overflow. I had to be willing to put my own oxygen mask on. I had to be willing to ask Lisa, what do you need? And sometimes that meant putting a comfortable distance between some people so that I can hear what I needed because I'm a giver. So if I'm in proximity, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna immediately want to give to the person that's in closest proximity to me. And so you have to say what do my what does my dream need? Not just my now, but what does my next 5 years need? What does my next 10 years require of me today? Listen to this. You are creating your future memories of yourself by what you do today. The questions that ought to be asked, the essential insights to be shared, and the empowerment that needs to be spread start right here on The Entrepreneurial You. Thanks to my guest, Dr. Marcia Forbes, for being willing and ready to contribute to this conversation and, of course, her exceptional work as a business leader. Until next time, I am Henika Watkins Porter, and I'm leaving you with a point of hope for this day. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 verse 9. What good. Here's a preview of what's next on The Entrepreneurial You. Starting Lifespan, for example, I didn't want to do a business that would not be beneficial to other persons. So it was like... I needed to do something that persons can benefit from in a positive way and I think those are some of the reasons why I have to, you know, that's, that's what motivates me. I want to see people happy, I want to see people healthy. Join us next week for another set of thought-provoking conversations with leaders, captivating features and an opportunity to unleash the entrepreneurial spirit in you. The Entrepreneurial You was brought to you by JPS, powering what matters.